I was sitting in the guest room of our house and I, I thought she was dead. And so I kept calling her phone and I think it was like the 20th time that I called and she didn't pick up. And then I remember thinking to myself, why do you keep calling? She's never going to pick up, she's not gonna answer. And I sat there and I remember thinking, holding the phone in my hand, I said, I'm not calling again, I'm done. And then I just thought to myself, this thought popped in my head and I said, I need to make the rest of my life so good that it makes all of this worth it. That was what stuck with me, was in that moment, I thought to myself, like, you have to be so good that it makes everything worth it. And I think I took that on with me in that now when I go through anything in life, I just think to myself, make it worth it. Make the dark moments worth it by doing yourself justice and getting to the other side and getting through it and not being a victim of those dark times. I don't know how a kid at that age had that thought. No longer am I gonna keep calling. She's gonna leave. Who knows if she's gonna come back? I need to focus on myself. It like lit a fire inside of me to be better because I feel like in that moment, I saw her turn into this person that I felt was so unfamiliar to me. The only thought I could have to myself was like, I will never do this to somebody. I never want to do this to anybody in my life and make them feel this way. And so I think what it did was that it propelled me to go in the complete opposite direction that she was in. Today, the Mulligan Brothers film crew flies out to Las Vegas to meet Leila Hormozzi, CEO of acquisition.com. From the outside, everybody sees the success story that she is. But nobody really knows humble beginnings and the obstacles that she faced along the way. Today's video was powered by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food that has everything that your body needs and helped fuel us through these film trips. I'll talk about it more at the end of the video. So my name is Layla Hormozzi, and uh, currently I'm the CEO of Acquisition.com. Prior to that, I was the CEO of Gym Launch, Prestige Labs, and Allen. So I grew up in Portage, Michigan, um, which is like a small Midwestern town. Midwest, different from the West Coast in terms of like people are very friendly. You all know all your neighbors. Typically, if you grow up there, you end up staying there, getting a job there, starting a family there. Not as many people, I think, are venturing out and leaving and going to the coasts. And it's definitely a different kind of mentality. It's slow. It's much slower than where I live now. And so everything is slower paced, more family focused, less to do. You know, what's funny is that I just remember my entire life when I lived there, always thinking, I can't wait to leave. <laughs> you've got these moments in your life where you've had like these inflection points where you've had big changes. I think you've you referred to them before as like rock bottom. I, I would love to maybe talk about like maybe the first arrest, like w what was one of those moments like? You know, it's funny because I don't think that the first, even three or four times that I got arrested, I didn't think it was a big deal. One, context of like the town I was in, lots of people got arrested. It wasn't like a novel thing. <laughs> the people I hung out with got arrested. Wasn't a novel thing. Some of them had been to jail or prison. So it wasn't weird based on the people I hung out with. I, I think there's this shift that happens when you're in your early 20s. Until a certain point in my life, I felt invincible. I felt like I could do things. I could drive drunk. I could drink. I could act all sorts of ways, and I wouldn't have to bear the consequences that others would. And I think that went for me at that point in my life, which was like, oh, I understand where this is going, but that won't be me. I'm not gonna be one of those people. I'm not actually gonna end up getting put in jail. I'm not actually gonna end up drinking myself to death. I'm not actually going to end up with any of those things. And it wasn't until on my sixth arrest, I woke up at my parents' house and my father was waiting downstairs for me which was like the worst, one of the most sickening moments of my life to wake up there where I didn't live, have a ticket next to me of my arrest, and then have to walk downstairs to confront them. It was just like opening the door to walk down was like, I can still feel how I felt in that moment, it was awful. And I remember thinking that he was going to like come down on me, tell me how awful I am, he doesn't wanna to talk to me again, 
whatever. And I was prepared for that. But what I wasn't prepared for was that I walked down and he was sitting on the couch with my stepmother. And he looked at me and he just looked sad. And he said, I just wanted to let you know that I am worried if you continue to do this, that you're going to kill yourself. And it was like, in that moment, the fact that he thought that that, that would happen to me, it was just baffling. And that was what, in my mind, that was the thing that made me like, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't drink. My father is like the, the nicest person. He came here from Iran. He started this family. He's only done anything to try and make my life better. He tried to get me out of my mom's house. Like everything that he's done for me, he's been a fantastic father. And to feel like I put him in a situation where he's worried that I'm gonna kill myself. And I respect my dad's opinion. It was the moment that I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't drink like this. I can't keep getting arrested. Like I can't keep fucking around. I think my dad has been the anchor for me many times in my life. After I moved out of my mom's house, I moved in with my dad and I was very angry. And I don't think that's like a, an emotion that, I think a lot of girls get sad, but I was angry and like raging at all points in times, at everybody. Is there a particular moment or story that would encapsulate or describe your dad to, to somebody else? Yeah, I think we were at a store and I saw this furniture set and it was, you have to think, I'm 15, a, a girl at the time. And it had this beautiful white crested vanity and bed and dresser and it was so beautiful. And I remember I was like, oh my gosh, this is so pretty, it's so beautiful, but it was so expensive. You know, and I wasn't thinking I would ever get furniture anyways. We always had hand-me-down stuff. We never got like new stuff. I remember when I moved out of my mom's house and in with my dad and I felt so out of place. Like I felt like I left my mom's house, which wasn't safe and such, but I at least felt like that was my home I grew up in. It was people I knew. I moved in with my dad and I felt so much unfamiliarity. I remember I told him I didn't feel like it felt like home. And I would like lay awake at night feeling like this isn't my house. I feel scared. I feel uncomfortable. And I remember I came home one day and I walked into my room and it was all the furniture that I'd seen at the store. And my dad looked at me and he was like, you know, you, you deserve everything. Like, I want you to feel comfortable here. I want you to feel safe and at home. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I just don't deserve you as a father because I was so angry. And it's so funny because I broke down in tears because I felt so undeserving of that furniture. I couldn't even fathom that my dad spent that much money on it for me, who was acting like a complete asshole. But that's who he is. He's the guy that shows up when you're acting like a complete asshole and he's there to be like, but you're not. <laughs> like, this isn't who you are and you're gonna get back on track. And he's unwavering in that instance. Like, no matter how I'm feeling, my dad doesn't change how he shows up. And I think that that's why I consider him to be a rock. And that's what I think that I have been able to emulate for others, which is like, no matter how angry somebody is, no matter how sad they are, no matter how depressed, no matter, I won't waver. And therefore they can rely on me because how they feel isn't going to change how I show up. And I think that was like the best gift he could have given me because to this day he does that. And I think there's a quote that you said about, it's not about the money, the money just allows me to impact more people. Is that where this comes from then? I think it does come a lot from him. I think that I grew up with my father telling me, you know, nothing is worth doing things you don't enjoy. No amount of money. And you know, part of me believed and part of me didn't. Part of me was like, I'll find out for myself. Everything I pursued up until I met Alex was only to learn and to figure out what I really wanted to do and how I could help people. And it wasn't until I met Alex that I feel like it's almost like the bridging of him and my father um, having both of their perspectives has given me mine, which was my dad always said, follow your passion, do what you love, do what you can to help other people. And I would do that at the sacrifice of myself. And so I think that was where that went wrong was that I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't, you know, giving myself the oxygen mask first. And then I met Alex 
And he said, why on earth can you not have both? Why can't you do things you love and have passion over and also make money? And that was such, it sounds so simple, but it was such a frame shift for me. And I was like, I don't know, I guess I can. He's like, yeah, I don't think it's an either or. Throughout her life, Layla used the trauma and difficulties that she's faced along the way to become better. She used the power of resilience to turn life's challenges into opportunities for growth. When everything is stacked against you, it's not what life throws at you, it's how you decide to react to it. Today's video was powered by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food. I've used Huel for the last two years when I'm on shoot, when I'm flying around the world, when I'm making these documentaries and doing the podcast. And the reason for that is because when we are so busy in our lives and my sisters and my brothers are absolutely crushing it, sometimes the last thing we can think of is the nutrition, the calories, the energy that we need to make all of that happen. So as a life hack, I've been reaching into my bag and grabbing a bottle of Huel, knowing that it has everything my body needs, including all the protein to maintain Neve's powerlifting career, my strength career, going for the world record stones, all that kind of stuff at the grab of a bottle has been an absolute game changer. Use code MULLIGANBROS10 at checkout with the link in the description for a discount on your next order at Huel, where you can find out more of their products, including my favorite, the Black Edition Protein link down below. Thank you so much to everybody who supported us at mulliganbrothers.com. We promise we will not let you down. We are on a mission to find the most inspirational stories and documentaries, and we have just stepped up the level. And I'm so excited for you to see the next three projects we have planned. Click subscribe and notification if you want to join in on those videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.